Now you two here. Hope everyone have a wonderful day. And I'm here with who? We for Nepa Checo. All right. And what did you do at the national recently? Uh, yeah, I topped. Uh, I top three. I managed to get to top thirty-two at the championships here on Latin America. All right. Congrats. And what what deck were you playing? And and what made you want to play that deck? Uh, I played what I call Vey, which is branded Adventure Eldritch. Ooh, sounds spicy tech. Um, so w what was your reason on what you want to play that besides Despia and Swordsaw and other decks are out there? Okay, so everybody is, uh, it wasn't, uh, actually I'm going to tell it to you uh, further uh, on my matchups. Everyone is playing Sorcel, everyone is playing Despia, and I really wanted to play something with a little bit more of toolbox and a lot of versatility because of the quantity of rounds on the event. So I decided to play this this deck because I think that it has an out for everything. It, it always has something uh up on the sleeve, so I decided that this was a really good choice. It's not the conventional Elledge build that that are you that you're gonna see. Uh, so I think that this deck is pretty versatile. Uh, it it can every matchup is good for this deck. You only need to know obviously the matchup and how to play your cards and every every part of your engine to know what what it what. What is the job that it must fulfill? So uh, that's why I decided to play this deck. It, I think it, it was something safe to play. All right, makes sense. All right. Um, before we get into the video, um, the deck profile. Do you want to give any shout outs to anyone before we get into the deck profile? Yeah, sure. Uh, sure. Uh, I want to give a shout out to my uh, to my team uh, and the shop, uh, uh, Dragon Inc., uh, one of my sponsors. Uh, my local store, Elm Gamers, and obviously all my friends, my girlfriend who were supporting me, and the persons who I was uh, who uh, testing, make decisions of the deck. So I think that that's all. All right, sounds good. And I'll put all the information if you guys want to visit their local shop. And yeah, all right, let's get ready for the deck profile. So yeah, uh, first of all, uh, I'm gonna divide it by uh, engines because there are three engines on the deck. So the first engine is obviously the Eldritch. I play two lords. Uh, I think three is too much, and most of the times one is not enough. Uh, there is a lot of cards that it's that people is playing, like DD Crow, Call by the Grave, that can get rid of one lord. So uh, sometimes throwing lord is pretty good. Actually, helped me to play to play my last round on the event. Drawing a hard drawing lord with a spell, it, it's just two interruptions in one. Uh, two Eldland. At the first, I was playing like three, but it ended up being a break because once your trap cards are in the graveyard, you don't want to see this kind of cards on, on, on your hand, like hard drawing them on further turns on grind game because this deck uh, actually has a lot of uh, mid-range uh, power. Uh, a lot of Elite players know what I'm talking about. So yeah, drawing the sec, the third, uh, drawing multiple Edland is not uh, something great. Uh, three conquistadors. Uh, this is uh, one of the best trap cards on the on the deck. One Wakero, I was playing too, but uh, because of the DP uh, being lowered, uh, I think that this card is not that necessary at at two or three, uh, how it was played before. So one was uh, amazing. I actually resolved it like twice in the whole tournament, and it was like a twelve round tournament in total. So yeah, it was not that needed. It was more of for grindy. Uh, Golden Life Forever. Uh, this card actually came in clutch various times, uh, negating cards like Ride of Arm uh Duster, which was a uh, is a card that is played a lot on the main deck uh, because of of the mine. Uh, so this card it, it was really good to have an opening negate. And we Scarlet Sanguine, um, basic card just to bring out the Lord. So yeah, th that was all for the Elitch engine. Then uh, I played the triple uh, Water Enchantress, uh, Consistency, uh, one Griffin, and one Illegal Knight. A lot of people was telling me why I played the Illegal Knight. Uh, it was just because uh, this is another search out of uh, Faithful Adventure. Uh, it is a really good card going second and it, it is really good card uh, in the mirror matches for example i play like uh, against two mirror matches in the tournament and it helped me out because uh you can just give it out on the end phase and to to bring out the, the trap cards that your opponent set 
and just bring it back with Drake back at the next turn. So it was pretty good. Uh, I really like this card. Uh, triple Rider for a Messier, one Faithful Adventure, and one Drake come back. And that was it for the Adventure Engine. And the small package of the branded engine, just uh, the three branded fusion and the two fallen and fall bus. Um, mm, couldn't add more things like Alibur and stuff because I think that maybe those those kind of cards can conflict with the uh, adventure engine, and adventure engine is just so powerful in this deck. So it is a small uh, package, as you see. And now for all the things on the toolbox, uh, for hand trust, I play the three nips. Uh, I wasn't sure about this uh, decision because uh, there was a lot of DSP on, on the tournaments. I I played against like six SPS on the, on the whole tournament, so it was a really big quantity. Um, but when I uh, I drew this card against Bonks and Sorcel, and it was just amazing. It was really good. Uh, three ash. I think right now it's it's really mandatory. Uh, just one of the best hand traps right now in the format. And triple Baylor, a uh, card that I wasn't completely sure about playing it. Uh, it ended up being really good. Uh, I I want I didn't want it to play that much of floodgates on the deck because like I already said, uh, a lot of people is playing cards like lightning storm, evenly matched. Um, Duster, just because uh, of mine, or Cosmic Cyclone Twins Twisters, so I want to have more uh, versatility on my hand, on my field, uh, my monster part, on my uh, spell and trap cards, so I wanted to be more versatile on where my interruptions are. Uh, that was all for the hand traps. <clears throat> uh, for spell cards, uh, on Toolbox I played 3 Prosperity, uh, I think this card is pretty important. Uh, there are plenty spare uh, spaces that you can manage without any problem, and there is a lot of power one-offs that we're playing on the deck. Uh, cards like Edland, cards like Branded Fusion, cards like uh, Rider for a Master, Enchantress, even Skill Drain is a really good card to to dig up with this. Uh, and two droplets. Uh, this was a last-minute decision, and it ended up being really good. Mm, just because there is a lot of cards that we can actually send off with this. Uh, Lord, Enchantress, Ride, Edland, the Trap cards. Uh, going second, this is a really good card. And yeah, it, it actually gave me dual two times throwing this card off the pot. And the the favorite card of all the people is the Skill Drain. I played through Skill Drain. Um, it is just a, not a win against a lot of decks, and it is... <laughs> Really abusive. Uh, it, it, it you just cannot play Elich without playing Skill Drain. To be honest, it's just a, such a broken card. That's true. That's true. And a uh, couple questions before we get into uh, the an extra. Um, what was sure. two droplet was perfect? Was was there a time you need a third one or two was perfectly fine? Um, actually, I, I'm gonna be completely honest. I played two because I only managed to get two at the moment. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, I think that I I already played triple droplets in other kinds of deck like uh tribe brigade mm -hmm. and sorcel and this deck can get a lot of it because you can set you can you have free discard folders for the deck but <clears throat> i think that two was a really uh, good number because three sometimes can be breaky and two is a correct number and add it up because you can play prosperity to dig it out so uh, i thought that it was a really good decision Okay, makes sense, makes sense. And um, did you play um, a DD Crow or a Ghost Bell for that tournament? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, it's on the side deck. Oh, and I'm going to okay. show it to you. Oh, I, uh, I don't know if you want me to go for side deck or extra deck first. Uh, I don't really mind. Uh, whichever you feel comfortable. Okay, let's just go for the extra deck because it's more a hand. Uh, for the extra deck, on the branded part, I play one Alba Lonatas, uh, two Mirror Jade. Two Alvian, one Titanic Clad, and one Luvelian. This uh, I think that this was the only things that you want to to have on the extra deck. Most of the times, most of this was banished with Prosperity, to be honest, like the Luvelian and the Titanic Clad. But this is only to get to your engine. Uh, for Lynx, I played one Lina, one uh, Dark, 
and the uh, one link spider, and the Celine, uh, Kristen, and Access Code Talker combo, which came in clutch in the whole tournament. Oh my god, it was just such a good engine that I run in here. Uh, I just stole a lot of games with this. So I just just normal summon the Veiler and just start doing some some crazy stuff. <laughs> uh, same uh, end phase is uh, uh, elixir. You just special summon the Ash and just just start doing the Kristen stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. It was just so broken, man. I, I I stole a lot of games with this combo. Actually, it gave me the duel on the top three, uh, top sixty four. Sorry. Mm-hmm. And lastly, I played one Gust of Max and one Leaf. Um, the main idea of this, it was not that much of doing the 2k damage effect. It was more because I respect decks like Ignister that leave you the arrival mm-hmm. with uh, with 6k or more because Access could just come b- bump it up to 53. But uh, if they leave the, the arrival at 6k, you have no out of, of to that deck so uh, this can bump up to 6k and you just can try to to do something mm-hmm. and to be honest i never play this in the whole tournament it was just the first things that i banished with prosperity to yeah that's true I really but that. <laughs> yeah but the but the thing was there like uh, i was not losing against that yeah and came out of nowhere yeah and that was for for the extra deck all right. Oh yeah. Um, for the first fusion that you showed, um, how many times did you use that card? Um, oh, the the, the Alba Lunatus. Uh, yeah, yeah, that one. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Actually, the main idea of this card it was like if I was playing against a deck like Dragon Link, I just can pray and draw hard draw on Alba, try to set it, and just contact fusion with all that. But uh, never came out. I didn't play against the Dragon Link. Mm-hmm. And also, but uh, uh, the thing that I was using it a lot is to send it off with Mirror Jade mm-hmm. and to add up the branded fusion on the end phase just to not waste the space of Bubble and others. Like, if I already used one on the branded fusion, because this is the you special summon this more than Dulvalian, so you you get this more out mm-hmm. and to not run out run off uh, run out of of Albions, you just can send this and try to get the brand diffusion back which is a thing that i was using in the whole tournament yeah that's true and would you say it's really good against the um punk engine um that uh, they've been doing super well um some national out there like uh the punk engine with the hot red and then the theory on and something like that would you say that's a good card yeah, because, uh, well, you can just, uh, like, the deck has no normal summons. Uh, that's why the Adventure Engine is so powerful in this deck. Uh, you actually do not commit to normal summon. You can just commit to normal summon availer, and it's not going to waste uh, any of your plays. Mm-hmm. So you can try to normal summon the Albion, and the Alba, sorry, and try to wipe off at least the Red Hot or even... I don't know, a Savage or something random. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's basically the reasoning of this card. It didn't come out that much, but uh, it is there. Like like Leaf, uh, they're, they're just there because uh, this is, these are not vital spaces for the deck. Mm-hmm. Makes sense, makes sense. And lastly, the side deck. I was playing... Um, three... Uh, Sorry, uh, three lava golem. This card is just—it is insane. Like if your deck cannot, if your deck, if your deck can play it, just play it. Uh, it was just so good. I used it against Despia. I used it against Source Soul. Uh, I used it against Punk. Uh, this card is just—it's uh, pretty busted. It's pretty good. Uh, three barrier. Um, three evenly matched. Uh, another great card. Uh, two. Uh, Token Collector, actually, I only played against one Source Soul, and this card just never came out. Mm-hmm. But the idea was there. Uh, 2D Crowd for Mirror Matches and for Despia. Uh, this only came once, but on testing, it just came out uh, so much because of Branded in Red. It's a card that I respect a lot. So, like, this is, like, the only way to try to stop it and the Foolish Burial, so... Mm-hmm. The the foolish Braille that returns the monster to your deck. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. And but I decided that Didri Crow was a little bit better just for the reasoning that I had behind the deck to not commit all to the back row. Mm-hmm. And lastly, uh, to draw a lockbird. Um, this was like a last minute decision, too. Uh, I was expecting a lot of punk decks, which they were, but I never played against them, only like twice. Uh, really good against a lot of decks like Tritron. Uh, which has been played a lot, Dragon Links, um, the Punks, uh, and any other random deck that can actually be hit by Troll and Lockbird. Mm-hmm. So um, that was the decision about Troll and Lockbird. Never drew it to... I, the only things that I never used in the whole tournament was the Talking Collector and the Troll and Lockbird. Um, and that was it for, for the deck. Yep. Well, yeah, your deck was consistency. Um, I, I kind of like the, the idea when you say DD Crow is really good because, like, Bell is really good, but it's only once per turn. But, like, you got two DD Crow. DD Crow is not um, once per turn, so that's insanely good as well. Yeah, the idea of DD Crow is, was just because it is a good, really good six draw, and there is people that actually managed to get the branded lost in the field, so Bell cannot do anything about against branded and red in that. Uh, in that instance, mm-hmm. and I think that Diddy Crow is a better card against the Elvich matchup, just because um, the only thing that Bell does against Elvich is negate the uh, Scarlet Sanguine, mm-hmm. and the Diddy Crow just banishes completely the problem, banishes the only trap card that they may have, or banishes completely the Lord, which hurts a way more. Mm-hmm. So uh, this this was the complete idea of of playing the Diddy Crow. I, I didn't want to commit it on playing on the main deck because I already played it uh, before mm-hmm. at three actually when Despi was a little bit uh, more in hype. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but it is pretty that I get against a lot of matchups. So uh, that thing, uh, uh, the thing that people says that you can DD crawl a tiny monster, it is a minus one. Uh, just don't do it. Don't have that mentality, man. Because I already did, and they just dump another one, and you just like, oh, I made myself a minus one. Mm-hmm. And no, it's it's not a good idea. If you're playing it a main deck, just put it off. Mm-hmm. True, true, true. All right. Well, thank you for the deck profile. You guys watched the video all the way to the end. Don't forget to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications for more Yu-Gi-Oh content and other content. And your boy Starborn92 is signing out. Peace.